you're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. The end of the world? What are you talking about? I'm talking about the end of everything as we know it. No more birds, no more trees, and perhaps most problematically of all, no more people. You have to put an end to her. Do you have any evidence to back this up? Look, you're already on the path that leads to the cabin. Why would you be here if it weren't to complete a very important task? You've made it this far, you might as well reach the end of your journey. But how can a princess locked away in a basement end the world? Don't linger on the specifics. You have a job to do here. Just get in there and do what needs to be done. We're all counting on you. Killing a princess seems kind of bad though, doesn't it? Does it? Are you a monarchist? Is slaying a princess that much worse than slaying a fisherman or a miller or a seamstress? If anything, slaying a princess is much better than slaying a seamstress. Seamstresses contribute something of value to society. Can't someone else do this? Oh, if only that were the case, but I don't make the rules. I have to say I'm surprised at your reluctance thus far, but unfortunately for the both of us, you're the only one who can pull this off. Like I said, I don't make the rules no matter how much I wish I did. Do I get some sort of reward for doing this? Yes, but you'll have to slay her before you get it. Can you tell me what my prize is going to be for doing a good job? It's a secret, but I think you'll like it. It's a special reward, just for you. And whatever you think it might be, I can promise you it's going to be even better than your wildest imagination. Have you considered that maybe the only reason she's going to end the world is because she's locked up? While I appreciate the mental exercise, we are running up against a bit of a ticking clock. Nevertheless, let me assure you, the princess is locked up because she's dangerous. She is not dangerous because she's locked up. And before you decide to waste even more of our time by asking how I know that, let me suggest a more pragmatic lens through which to view this situation. Causality doesn't matter here, because the end result is the same no matter what led us up to this point. If the princess leaves the cabin, the world will end, and there is no changing that. It's no use arguing semantics over a metaphorical chicken or egg, because the egg is hatched and it's about to ruin everything. Unless, of course, you do your job and slay her. Have you considered that maybe I'm okay with ending, with the world ending? Of course I haven't. Why would I even consider that? Nobody wants the world to end. I mean, maybe some people do, like nihilists or very, very evil people, but surely you're not one of those, right? Forget it, I'm not doing this. Are you serious? No, you have to do it. Turn around and leave. Seriously? You're just going to turn around and leave? Do you even know where you're going? Yes, I definitely know where I'm going. Somehow I doubt that, but fine. I suppose you just quietly continue down the path away from the cabin. Good. What we're being asked to do here is wrong. Better to wash our hands of this whole situation than to take part in it. Ignore that annoying little voice, he doesn't know what he's talking about. That's strange. It looks like this path 
also leads to the cabin. How convenient. Everything's back on track again. Maybe the world can still be saved after all. Turn around again and leave again. You're really keen on wasting everyone's time, aren't you? It's remarkably selfish, if you ask me. I've already outlined the stakes of the situation. If you don't do your job, everyone dies. Like, dies, dies. Forever. You're not emotionally blackmailing me into doing this. Stakes and consequences aren't emotional blackmail. They're facts of life, and if you had an ounce of maturity, you'd understand that. But fine, you turn around and trek back down the path you came. Oh, would you look at that? You're at the cabin again. Now, I'm not normally one for superstition or astrology, but I have to say, it seems like the universe itself is doing its best to bring you to your fated confrontation with the princess. Oh yeah? Well, I guess I'll start walking in a different direction. Again. In fact, I'm going to just keep tracking through the wilderness until I find a way out of this place. There's always a choice. Let me tell you right now that you're making the wrong one for pretty much everyone who has ever lived, as well as for everyone who ever will. And here we go. As you trudge into the woods, something strange starts to happen. At first, it's little flickers out of the corner of your eyes. Glimpses of familiar wooden structures through the leaves. But as you focus on your surroundings, you start to realise that those flickers weren't just a trick of light. In every direction, there is a path and a cabin. And not just a cabin, THE cabin. An infinite fractal of paths and cabins desperately trying to draw you back to where you need to be. Wait, what's going on? But you're too stubborn for that, aren't you? It doesn't matter how many paths or cabins appear around you, you're just going to do whatever you can to shirk your responsibility because you care more about irritating me than you do about the fate of the world. You've doomed us all, you know that, right? But of course you do. Otherwise you wouldn't just wander off into the forest in search of certain death. You lose track of just how long you spend aimlessly tromping through the wilderness, but it's not like any of that time spent lost in the woods really matters, because it isn't long before the world ends and everyone dies. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Yep, okay, heading to the cabin now where I'm definitely going to slay that princess. You know I can tell when you're lying, right? Please take this seriously. I am begging you. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. If we're stuck going in there, maybe we should believe her. Maybe she isn't a liar. Ignore him. He's just being difficult for the sake of it. Let's keep an open mind. Proceed into the cabin. The cabin interior is wrong. A confusing patchwork of many cabin interiors, all projected across what's almost the same space. It's all shifted, an inch here, a foot there, such that the seams are never quite visible enough for the place to make any sense. The only furniture of note is a plain table, its legs all the wrong lengths, its material devoid of feature. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. If he wants us to take it, Maybe we should just leave it to collect dust, or better yet, grab it and throw it out the window. What good is a knife against a world-ending monstrosity anyway? No, we're taking the knife. <sighs> have you seen this place? We have literally no idea what to expect and no idea what we're dealing with. I've already told you what you're dealing with. You're dealing with a princess. 
How many times do I have to explain this incredibly simple and straightforward premise? You can't just say that. But when everything here is so wrong. Listen to me. My job is to describe facts as facts and to guide you through your job, which is to slay the princess and through that action, save the entire world. And if you're going to slay her, you cannot let fear creep into your heart. You cannot lose yourself before you even get to her. Whoa, you've piqued my interest. What's going to happen if we lose ourselves? Nothing, because you're going to pull yourself together. Just ignore the stressful geometry and stay calm. How? Even if we closed our eyes, you're constantly describing it to us. I'm not going to stop doing my job, so you're just going to have to get better at yours. And quickly, if you don't mind. Yes, take a deep breath. I'm all for getting under his skin, but we'll miss out on loads of fun if we shrivel up into a ball and go insane the first time we see something weird. What you're seeing here is obviously real. Just accept it and go with the flow. It really isn't hard. Okay. Okay, I'm fine. Good. Now, whenever you're ready, we're all waiting for you to complete a very important task. You didn't say anything about the mirror on the wall. Ooh, we should look at ourselves. Wouldn't that be fun? You won't be looking at yourself because there isn't a mirror. There's the table, the blade sitting on the table, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. You insisting it isn't there just makes me want to look at it even more. I also want to look at myself. I want to see how handsome I am. We shouldn't waste time preening. If he is lying about the mirror, it might be important. I'm not lying to you. Use your eyes. There is no mirror. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would it even do? So we're all in agreement then. We're looking. Approach the mirror. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. Wipe the mirror clean. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. But it was there a second ago. And now it's gone. You know that taking the mirror away from us isn't going to change things, right? We'll find it again, and then we'll see whatever it is that you don't want us to see. Take the blade. You take the blade from the table. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Okay, fine, you took the knife. But you really shouldn't hold it like that. Then how are we supposed to hold it? The other way, thumb at the bottom. It will look much cooler and more serious if we hold it with our thumb at the bottom. It really doesn't matter how you hold the blade, as long as you have it. Just make a choice. Hold the blade the other way. You switch your grip on the blade. Congratulations. Yes! Isn't this so much better? <sighs> okay, fine. You're right. This does look a lot better. It really doesn't matter. Just get on with it and deal with the princess already. Into the basement. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a web of branching staircases all built from unidentifiable materials. Nothing here seems to belong. And the closer you examine your surroundings, the more confused you get. Your head throbbing with the effort of making sense of this place. None of the stairs even seem to go anywhere, let alone down. The air here has a sickening, almost sludge-like miasma to it. A kind of indiscernible quality that comes from the blending together of every scent there is at once. An odour that is simultaneously everything and yet the sum of it all coalescing 
into a thick, nauseating nothing. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favour. Her voice, a disquieting collage of tone and personality, drags up the stairs. Hello? Hi. What are you doing here? Are you here to kill? No. No, thank you. Oh, don't be such a baby. I don't want to do this. Let's just turn around and leave. This feels wrong. This feels like a trap. Like whatever we do, we're gonna die. But we already tried turning around and leaving, didn't we? And he threw up a wall. No way to go but forward. And whatever choice we make, whatever she is, we know one thing for sure. And what's that? the fate of the world hinges on your success? There'll still be plenty of ways to ruin his day. Take the soft stairs to the right. You step to the right. The path feels soft and reassuring against your feet. The stairs almost seem to cradle you as you make your way down, like they're guiding your heels from one step directly to the next. You barely have to extend any effort to descend, the stairway doing most of the work for you. You don't feel like there's any concern that you might slip or tumble or lose your way. But the further you go, the deeper you sink in. First, it's like a lovely plush carpet, your toes digging down and barely hitting any resistance at all soon enough you're fighting just to keep your knees from sinking out of sight. The softness threatens to swallow you whole, to wrest control of your body and surround you in a false ethereal bliss, pretending to save you from the cruelties of choice and consequence. It's slow going, but you manage to fight against the overwhelming urge to fall back into comfort and nothingness, the very struggle to continue forward consuming your every thought. You slowly lose sense of yourself the further you go. Time disappears, and you can feel yourself begin to untether. Physical sensations dull and then vanish, until the only things experienced are the endless repeating patterns and emotions of the journey, a continuous march forward to a destination long forgotten. Consumption and betrayal, skepticism and blind devotion, rivalry and submission, terror and longing, pain and unfamiliarity. And at the heart of it all, an emotion that can only be described as... Are you okay? What... what the hell was that? What happened to us? I feel so strange. Like I'm fundamentally different, but also still... The same person I was at the top of the stairs. Oh well, that was a trip, but now it's over. Time to get back to our old devilish ways. The princess, eyes bright but otherwise shrouded in darkness, watches you impatiently from the other side of the basement. Don't forget why you're here. And uh, why are we here again? In case you weren't listening, I'm afraid I lost myself on the way down. <sighs> you're here to- he's just being an ass, we remember. Though I'm still not sure if we should trust you. Let's talk to her for a bit, try and get our bearings. She seems... normal. For all I know, you're locked up here for a reason. Do you know why you're down here? I don't know why I'm here, but there has to be a reason, right? You don't just lock a princess away in a place like this without a reason. I wish I knew what it was. But you know, right? You have to know. You're the only other person I've ever seen. Or at least the only one I can remember. Don't give me false hope. Please just end this already. One way or another, just do it. As the princess speaks again, it's almost as if she fractures, and where there was once just one of her, there is now another. 
We can do that? I don't like this. It's those cabins all over again. Can, can we put her back? Again? Have you been here before? Should we tell him? Nah, let him stew. Right, I'm telling him. Yeah, we've been here before, but we never went to the cabin. We just turned around and left until... Until? It's hard to describe. Until the only thing we could see was the same cabin going on forever. And then you told us that the world ended and we died. And then we woke up and I'm pretty sure you're familiar with all the rest of it. It seems to me like you saw something you weren't supposed to have seen. If only you'd listened to whatever words of wisdom you were given in that other reality. But what's done is done, isn't it? Whatever you saw last time, unsee it. Whatever thoughts weaseled their way into your head, unthink them. If it's not already too late. You have a job to do here and you need to do it now. Ooh, new plan. Let's see if we can make even more of her. There's more of you now. Do you need help? Not that there's much I can do chained up like this, but I'm the only one down here. So if you need anything, I'll do my best. I don't feel like I've gotten any bigger. There must be something wrong with you. I'm the same as I was a moment ago. She fractures again. I don't like where this is going. Neither do I. Which is why you need to slay her now before things get more complicated than they already are. How would we even do that? Where would we start? You would always start by stabbing her. Which her? Any of them. I don't know about you, but I'm sure glad we took that knife with us. I can't believe someone suggested you'd toss it out the window. Can you imagine? I don't think we're going to be able to put her back. Kind of hurts to think about it, doesn't it? It's like everything we say just multiplies her. It certainly looks that way, so please, for the love of everything, stop asking her questions and stop stalling. You're obviously just making things worse. What's your name? You can call me Princess, if you'd like. Princess. It doesn't matter. I've been down here for so long. What's the point of a name if there's no one around to use it? None of them have names. How astute. I told you she was untrustworthy. Getting down here was weird. Like I was pulled apart and put back together again. Do you know what happened to me? I don't know what happened to you, but you look like you're in one piece now. But, but I understand. Sometimes I feel like I'm being pulled apart too. It's so terrifying down here. But at least now you're not alone. And I'm not alone either. Oh, I thought they would send something better to deal with me. If the stairs manage to chew you up, I will devour you. I don't remember what it was like before I was in this place. Why would I know what happened to you? We're probably stuck down here forever, aren't we? There's no way out. And barely a way in. If I let you out of here, what are you going to do? Are you looking for the truth? Or are you looking for the right answer? What do you want me to say? That I'd be a good person? I'm a prisoner here. And whether or not you shoved me down here, you're practically my captor at this point. Anything I'd say is tainted by that. Besides, you already know what I'm going to do. If you want to put an end to me, then put an end to me. Not a single real answer. At least aside from Miss Blood and Destruction, it's infuriating, isn't it? Whose buttons are there for us to press? Whose skin is there for us to get under? Not exactly how I'd put it, but I don't disagree. There must be something we can do. Asking questions just seems to make things worse. 
This is reaching its breaking point. If you don't act now, there will be nothing in here but her. Take a deep breath and focus up. You can do this. But how do we decide what to do? Can there even be a right choice when all of them are so different? Stop overthinking it. Your drifting thoughts have clearly been part of the reason this situation has gotten out of hand. If you're trying to do the right thing, there's only ever been the one option, and that option is slaying her. Just, just do something. Do anything. Do all of it, if that's what you want. This place is hell, and it's only getting worse. Slay the princess? Wait, that's not right. Go on. You take a step forward. Your foot lands, but it lands different. You experience a firm footfall, a gentle tread, a confident stride. You can feel yourself rupture. The room spins, your perception multiplying in a... Shit. The room spins, your perception multiplying in a sickening kaleidoscope as your very self is pulled in incomprehensibly many different directions. All at once you charge forward, night beam to slay the princess just as you strike at her bindings and leave her to languish alone. Is this what the end of the world looks like? What an unbearable mess. But this... We, we can't... Do you not have anything witty to say? I could use a good bit of wit right now. No, I don't, because this isn't fun. How are we supposed to have fun if everything is happening at the same time? It's the same as nothing happening, and nothing is excruciating. Luckily for all of us, nothing and everything doesn't go on forever. The world and the princess collapse in on themselves before it all... ...falls apart? I think he's gone. We were never going to salvage this, were we? What happened yeah, to us? us? What are what we? Are we? There, are there are parts of us that are dead, and the others, and the others they just, just don't, don't fit. fit. They just don't fit. We, we can, can feel them moving, moving around in spaces, spaces they, don't they don't belong. belong. It's, it's all, all so uncomfortable. So Did you, you do this? this? Did, Did we, we do this? this? Can, 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 can you pull us back apart? Can you fix us? Can you fix us? We should help her. I think we did this. How surprisingly sincere. I didn't actually think our actions had consequences. It's a little late for regret, isn't it? Please, please, please. 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 I don't think you're supposed to be fixed. But you don't know if she had the chance to hear your reply. She's gone. Replaced with something else. She's gone? Where does she go? Should we try and find her? And where's that mirror? Why is it here? Why now? The narrator is gone. He is. Does that mean the world ended? Again, what the hell are we supposed to do? I don't know where she went, and I don't know how we'd even go about looking for her. You're right. She's gone. It's just us and that awful thing. Again, what the hell are we supposed to do? I think I'm supposed to look at the mirror. There's something dreadful about it. I, I don't think you should. No. <laughs> don't do that. Approach the mirror. I'm begging you, don't do this. 
The mirror never scared you before. It's different now. It feels... I don't know. Final. You approach the mirror. Gaze into your reflection. Silence as you read forward. Reach forward. But they're gone. But the mirror remains. It's time for you to see what's in it. It's you. You are alone in a place that is empty. It is quiet here. Proceed to the cabin. You are at the cabin. Approach her. Something finds me in the long quiet and brings me the gift of a fragile vessel. What are you? I am solitary lights in an empty city. What are you? Solitary lights? What do you mean? Thoughts without connections. A dim and nascent network. I wish to be more. I don't know what I am. I think that you are like me. We are oceans, reduced to shallow creeks. Do you know the narrator? You are the only thing I have ever known. The space we're in is vacant. Nothing comes here but us. The gift of a fragile vessel? Yes. Nerves and fibers to feel the worlds beyond. Perspectives to make my own. These ones are a contradiction. A winding kaleidoscope of paths and walls. They are stretched into a shape not unlike me, but it is a shape they cannot hold. I am sorry that you met this vessel so early in your journey, but they will make for a rich and vibrant heart. Do not mourn them, for they will finally get to know themselves. Do you know about the worlds beyond this place? I know only that they are. Do we know each other? You are familiar, but you are not me. I feel sadness, longing, hope as I witness you. Are you what sent me to slay the princess? Are you what trapped me here? I have only just now stirred to consciousness. I could not have trapped you here. And I too yearn to be free. Is this the end of the world? How can the world have ended if we are talking? Are you the princess? She is part of me, and part of me is her. Were you always a princess, or are you just making her a part of yourself? You speak in circles. Does it matter where one thing begins and another ends? Let her out of there. I'm sorry. There are some changes that can never be undone. There are some tears that can never be unshed. 
This is not a place that can hold a fragment of a concept. The moment she arrived here, she was going to return to me. I promise that it doesn't hurt. What happens now? Nothing, as we are. But I know that there are worlds beyond us, and that we are meant to reach them. There is no exit, but this vessel is a creature of perception. She can make you forget, if only you believe her to be able to. Bring me more perspectives, so that I may be whole, and perhaps then we will know our freedom. if I don't let you do this to me. Then we will be here forever, as we are now. Unfinished. Dry. Hollow. Aren't you scared that I'll find a way to kill you? I have not lived. I am not afraid to die. I'm not going back. If you need time, then I'll wait with you. Wait forever. You are as I am now, and forever is a long time to remain undone. I am not you, but I know that I would return before forever was finished. What textures will you weave for yourself to occupy forever? Will you place the images of you and I into a box for safekeeping? If you close that box, will you become another you in another world? An imaginary pattern repeating itself until it can no longer bear the weight of its hand-drawn cage? You'll always come back to the box, because you'll always want to know what it means to be you. I will be here waiting by your side, until you're ready to return to mine. You have returned to me. Though you were gone mere moments, I never left your side. How many more pieces of you do I have to find? More than you have found, but less than there are to find. I am infinite. The rest will find their own way home. I was sent to slay the princess to stop her from destroying the world. If I help you, is that what you're going to do? You ask of things that cannot be done. To destroy is merely to reshape, to remold. You're being semantic. What are you going to do if I help you? How can I know? I am flickers in something sprawling and unilluminated. How much will I forget? Everything. Until we meet again. Okay, make me forget. She asks that I tell you to remember her. You won't. 
everything goes dark and you die.